We do have Solange Jean <laughs> with us in studio for a review of the international papers. And Solange, we're going to start uh, with some coronavirus news, uh, an upcoming sober milestone here in France. Yeah, uh, by the end of the week, France will likely have passed the bar of 100,000 deaths from COVID. And or as CAC, the illustrator of L'Opinion says, France is being inducted into a different kind of club or the group of countries that have lost 100,000 people to the disease. Now, navigating such extensive loss Loss is just one of the major hurdles facing politicians and the French president. Another of those hurdles is what to do with the rollout of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, with European nations trying to figure out, as Politico tells us, whether to pause its rollout or not over fears that there are blood clots, so there's a rare side effect of blood clots similar to the AstraZeneca vaccine. Now, another minefield is variants. Uh, France has suspended flights to Brazil because of uh, a dangerous variant there. Liberation dives into why this P1 variant has not spread faster here. And it explains that the British variant that's sweeping Europe, well, it's slightly more contagious than, uh, than, than the, the Brazilian one. So it's currently winning the race there, which may, not, or may or may not save us from the Brazilian variant, which is better at targeting young people and sneaking past our immune system responses. Curious the way those virus working. Let's uh, switch gears to that news that Joe Biden is uh, expecting expected to announce uh, that official complete withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan. Yeah, the Washington Post is looking at what the legacy of this 20-year war will be. And it says the easy answer is that there is a limit to U.S. Uh, power. But it says that the more, an more nuanced lesson is that superpowers need to, to learn to fight guerrilla wars or to get in and get out fast when it comes to war. And, and also that the U.S. needs to change how it approaches its enemies, that negotiating with the Taliban early on and often will, could have potentially prevented prevented such a drawn-out conflict. Uh, to some art news now, Solange, and there's been quite a lot of buzz over a documentary that aired on French television. It claims that pa the painting Salvador Mundi may not have been made entirely by Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, is the painting the real deal or not? That's been the focus for a couple of weeks now uh, in, in a roll-up to the documentary airing last night. For the painting, for if the painting is not 100% da Vinci's, as the documentary claimed, well, Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi crown prince who purchased it for a whopping $450 million, well, he may have made a bad investment. Except, as Courrier International tells us, the documentary might be wrong. It refers to articles in the New York Times and La Tribune de l'Art that debunk the doc and all of the buzz over authenticity. And this fascinating story it does not stop there. As the Jerusalem Post pointed out earlier this week, the geopolitical ruckus around the world's most expensive painting, well, it's equally interesting. Be it when it was purchased, it came at a, at a at just as Mohammed bin Salman was sort of clearing out corruption or so-called clearing out corruption in uh, the the the, in Saudi Arabia, or in talks with Macron over the Louvre exhibit, or now with many nations and many media uh, potentially enjoying a narrative where Ben Salman gets scammed, whether it is true or not. Got a picture and a thousand words or questions, certainly true there. Finally, Solange, you've uh, spotted a couple of stories about the seaside. Yeah, live science tells us that two biologists, well, they found fossilized footprints of 36 Neanderthals that walked a beach in southern Spain some 100,000 years ago. Now, these could be potentially the oldest prints ever found in Europe. And in analyzing them, they found that children in the group were likely playing in the sand, which seems wonderfully cyclical because, as Slate tells us, some kids in Spain are currently hanging out barefoot in the sand with a school holding classes on the beach, a COVID-friendly approach that taps into, we now know, a 100,000-year-old uh, love for wiggling our toes in the sand. And what an appealing classroom. Yes. Solange Bijan, thanks a lot for that look at the international papers.